Hey guys, Vladimir here. I thought I would do a follow-up video to address some of the questions and comments left on my previous video, which if you recall involved adding some texture or knurling effect to an object that we created. The common question I received was, hey, couldn't you just go to create pattern, pattern on a path and then do a circular pattern of those features to get the same result? And the short answer is yes. However, it does come with its limitations because it would only work on objects that were created using the revolve tool. So something that you can uh, swing a profile to get your object uh, in the beginning. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Uh, so let's look at how it would work and then in shapes where it wouldn't work. One of the comments from Wilco references this workflow and he actually left a great link to a screencast where he demonstrates how it would work. And I'm just gonna now do a quick little summary of that workflow for you. So let's start by creating a new design. And something I'll do here, which you may not know you can do, is you can copy a sketch from uh, one design to another. So let's let, we'll double click on that first sketch here. And I'm just going to highlight everything, right click, go down to copy and then move over to my new design. And then I'm going to create a sketch just on my XY plane and then right click and then go down to paste and notice how I have my sketch from that previous design here. So uh, it's a neat little tip. If you don't know, you can do that. Okay. Let's take that. We'll click stop sketch and now we'll just go to create revolve we'll revolve that profile around this bottom axis here to get our body. We'll create a, another sketch. This time we'll do it right on our XY plane again. And we're going to project. So let me remove bodies actually and just show that first sketch. We'll project this curve here. So we'll hit P for project and just grab that line. Selection filters just set to specified entities. And we'll click OK. I'll remove that first sketch and that's just left me with that second sketch. And I'm going to draw uh, just a rectangle here. So I'll hit R for rectangle. Uh, just make this two by two. Hit enter. And I don't have to actually put this right on that line. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can put it anywhere. So I'll just put it up here for now. I'll bring these dimensions down a bit. And I'm going to click Stop Sketch. E for extrude. Select that profile. And I'm going to go to a, a symmetric extrusion, bring this out. We're going to need to see it. So we'll bring bodies in and I'll give it an extrusion of 1.5 millimeters and hit enter. Okay. Let's just look at the second body we created here and we want to see our sketch of our curve line. So now we can go to create pattern, pattern on a path. You have the option here. You can choose faces and highlight everything, but I'm just going to choose bodies, um, choose that object. And then for my path, I'm going to choose my curved line here. And then I'm just going to drag this out, make 10 of these. So I'm going to change quantity to 10 and click OK. And now I can see that if I bring my full body back, you know, there's my pattern. So I obviously want these to follow this contour so I can actually go back to that sketch. So I'm going to go my timeline, double click on it and just bring highlight or double click everything and just bring it down so that it just kind of peeks over and then click stop sketch. And you can see that it follows that contour. Now, uh, one thing I do want to point out is you can see where it's not really even. So as this follows the path and in this case here, we have a lot of the body showing. And in this case, it kind of gets buried. So we can fix that by going into um, our pattern feature here and changing the orientation from identical to path direction and then click OK. And now you can see that each object is normal to the path. So it's uh, perpendicular and they're all now um, you know, this facing or basically uh, popping out the same, same way. Okay. And let's say we wanted to add some fillets or so we can just kind of bring our timeline back before we did the pattern. Uh, let's remove body one. I'll just select everything F for fillet. And then let's say, give it a fillet of 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, so it's nice rounded feature. Click okay. And then we can bring our timeline uh, back to the future and everything will have that uh, fill it on it. 
So let's bring back our body one, and we'll again name this uh, to distinguish it from the rest. We'll call it main body. Okay, now we can take all our pattern features and do a circular pattern of them. So let's remove main body for now. I will highlight everything, go to create, down to pattern, circular pattern, bring back that main body. Uh, well, I'm gonna change this from faces to bodies and make that selection again. So remove everything and then select bodies. And for the axes, I'm gonna bring that main body back and just select any of these circular uh, features. So you can actually do this circle or the bottom circle here, or I can actually select my uh, ax axis here in the middle. So I'm just gonna go with this uh, circle here and I'm gonna enter a quantity, quantity of 10 and hit okay and as you can see i've got uh, all those bodies now that perfectly follow the contour of this shape and it basically it gets me the same result right uh, as the other way and the only thing left to do would just be to combine everything so we can go to modify combine uh, choose my main body as my target body and then my tool bodies are going to be body two i'm going to scroll all the way down hold shift and click body 101 and have the operation as join and click OK. This may take a few seconds uh, depending on your computer speed, but at the end you'll see one body and everything is combined. Okay, let's look at an instance where this wouldn't work. So I'll create a new design here and let's bring our origin and I'm gonna create uh, two additional planes off of this bottom plane here. So we'll go to construct offset plane, select that first plane, bring this up. We'll give it a offset of 30 millimeters, click OK. And I'll do the same thing, construct offset plane, and this time we'll make it uh, 60 millimeters off of that original plane. And now I'm gonna create a sketch on this first plane. I'm just gonna grab my spline tool and create some sort of wacky shapes here, uh, just something like this, uh, stop sketch. I'll do the same thing on that second plane. Again, we'll create uh, another sort of a uh, wacky spline tool, so something maybe like this. And stop sketch, and then on that third plane, we'll just uh, go ahead and create a circle here. So uh, we'll go somewhere off the middle here, or somewhere close to the middle, do a circle, stop sketch. And now I'll create a loft connecting these three shapes. So. We'll go to create down to loft and we'll choose one, two, three, click OK. And we have this really funky uh, looking body here. And let's look about how we would uh, go about making that sort of similar texture on this body. OK, so in this case, I mean, we can try going the same way. So let's create a, a sketch and we'll let's go to a home view. We'll go to a front view. We'll choose X, Y plane here, and we'll hit P for project. And let's just project the side profile here. So we'll choose bodies as our selection filter. Choose this body, click OK. Let's remove bodies. And I just want like one of these sides, right? So I'm gonna uh, delete the rest of these actually. Okay, now let's approach this the same way. I'm gonna draw uh, a rectangle, oops, draw a rectangle. Take that rectangle, just move it into this uh, spline curve here. Stop sketch, E for extrude. Let's grab that rectangle and extrude it symmetrically. And I'm gonna choose, bring bodies in so we can see it. And I'm gonna change the cut to new body. Actually, we'll get rid of this body, but leave the parent body on. Okay, so we'll make that two millimeters. Uh, click OK. Let's bring back that sketch. So sketch four. And then we're going to do create down to pattern, pattern on path, select our body. And then our path, we're going to select that as well. Move the arrow all the way down. Uh, again, we'll choose 10 of these. Click OK. So there's our body. And so uh, let's fix that. Let's go back to our timeline here. We're going to choose path direction instead of identical click OK um, we still have a bit of an issue there so let's go back to that sketch here uh, maybe bring this in a little more 
Let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's looking better. Now we can try, let's say we wanted to do that circular pattern on this. So if I go to create pattern, uh, circular pattern, let's remove that first body, select uh, everything here, and then the axis, let's say we wanted it around this axis here, we'll choose 10 of those, uh, click OK. Uh, well, see, it doesn't really, it's not going to follow uh, the contour of that body because what it's trying to follow is the basically the circular pattern here and the body is not uniform all the way about. So um, kind of a neat sort of creature, but it's not really what we want. So in cases like this, um, the only way that I can see making it work is by using the uh, other method that I used in the original video. So let's really quickly go through that uh, and see how that would apply to this body. So I'm just going to remove these, the circular pattern for my timeline and that or a, a pattern on a path there. I'm just clicking them and holding delete. I'm also going to delete that last extrusion. Okay, since this is stuff I already covered in the last video, I'm going to move through it really quick. We'll create a sketch on this top surface here, and I'll hit L for line, and let's reference that middle. You'll see that blue circle come up. I'm going to draw a line straight up, uh, select it, make it a construction line. Then I'm going to draw two more lines uh, coming out on either side of my first line. D for dimension, I'll make it the dimension from the first line to that middle line and make that 2.5 millimeters and I'm going to grab my symmetry constraint and make this line and this line symmetric about this center line. Next I'm going to hit L for a line. Uh, just kind of close off these two angled lines and I'm going to uh, grab my horizontal constraint to make it horizontal. Now what you want to do here is just make sure that this wedge here uh, when you rotate it it's going to be uh, basically be able to cover your entire body here. So um, that looks perfectly fine. So we'll hit stop sketch, E for extrude. I'm going to select these two profiles here. Go down, I'm going to do a distance of negative two millimeters and change it from uh, cut to a new body. Click OK. And next I'm going to uh, look at our bodies here. We have body one, which is our main body. So let's go ahead and name that main body. And then we're going to go to create down to pattern, uh, do circular pattern, select our uh, wedge here that we created. And then we're going to do uh, axes is going to be that circle uh, from the top of our surface here. So we're going to reference that. We're going to make 10 of these and hit OK. Next, let's go ahead and remove main body again. And we're going to choose create down to pattern. This time, rectangular pattern, select everything. Uh, click direction. We're going to choose the Y axis as our direction. We can start dragging this down. Let's see. Let's bring our main body back so we can see the extent. And I'm going to, again, make 10 of these and click OK. So that's what we have right now. Next, I'm going to go to uh, main body there. I'm going to right click choose copy right click on top of it again and choose paste and i'm just going to paste it in place so i'm going to click ok on this dialog box and whenever you paste something it actually goes all the way to the bottom so i'm going to grab it and move it back up and i'm going to place it right under main body and because i'm going to make it this bigger i'm going to call it big body and i'm going to right click on big body and choose isolate i'm going to go to modify uh, go to press pull, select this surface here, and I'm going to enter a distance of uh, just two millimeters. Click OK. We'll go to big body, go down to unisolate. Uh, that brings back all the bodies. And let's get rid of main body for now. We'll go to modify, down to combine. We'll choose big body as our target body, and then our tool body is going to be uh, all these wedges. So that's body 102 down to the last body there. So I'm going to hold shift and choose this body 201 and make sure change operation to intersect and we'll click OK. And that's going to leave us with this shape that follows the contour of our body. Uh, 
as you can see these wedges have been cut perfectly to match uh, the main body so let's get rid of sketches here and now uh, the final thing we have to do is just combine everything into one body so we'll go to modify uh, combine and again we'll choose main body as our target bot as our yeah target body and then our tool body is going to be the rest of the body so we'll uh, click on the first hold shift click on the last one and then uh, we're going to change the operation from intersect to join and click OK. And there we have it. So uh, that's really the only way I can see or I can think of to make this work where we can have uh, sort of these textured features follow such a complex shape as this. Now, uh, if you have another method, again, I'm all ears, you know, I, I learned from you guys as well, and I would love to hear it if you have another way to go about this. Um, but like I said, this is the only way I can see about going about this uh, for now. As always, leave your questions and comments below. I do answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and visit desktopmix.com for more Fusion 360 tutorials.